Okay, so uh, today's video is about terminology and um, I think states of mind that can come out of terminology or attitudes and expectations that come out of terminology. So wording really matters to me and the wording of some mediumship concepts kind of got in my way in the beginning and I found ways where I've made them helpful to myself. So uh, just like I said in the last video that I didn't get animals initially for more than a year um, because I was expecting a person. I was expecting to connect with a person. So I just never got animals because, and that just came out of, that was a byproduct of my expectation. I had nothing against connecting with someone's dog, for example, or their cat, but I never got that because, and it wasn't until I realized, oh, I'm expecting people that that's why I was only getting people. So um, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, the concept of sitting in the power. But uh, and what I have to say about that first is I personally believe that we are all eternal beings having a temporary physical life experience. And so you'll hear people, especially um, people from the United Kingdom talk about sitting in the power and building, which for me is just sitting like I do when I have a client in front of me, but without a client being there and just strengthening that connection with people in spirit. Um, that's what that is for me. But calling it sitting in the power for me is like, um, it makes it sound like a power, like a magical power. <laughs> I never liked that wording. And so then I discovered through reading and research that some people call it sitting with spirit. And that's what I call it, sitting with spirit, because I just like that terminology better. First of all, that's what I'm doing when I'm sitting without a client in front of me and strengthening my connection uh, with people in spirit and being more aware of that connection and how they communicate. So uh, if the word power bothers you the way it bothered me, and I'm not, I know I'm not alone in this because I've talked to other mediums, um, sitting with spirit is another way of calling that instead of sitting in the power. Um, and I, I have to say, I've noticed that there are some very good American mediums who never talk about sitting in the power, um, who don't even seem to know what that is. But that doesn't mean that they're not doing something like what I call sitting with spirit uh, and not talking about that. So, um, but it is, a, it is a very British thing to talk about sitting in the power and that phraseology. Um, the other thing that that kind of got in my way initially was, um, so I do believe, I've heard mediumship described this way and I agree with it, that, that we raise our vibration, people in spirit lower theirs and we meet in the middle. And the medium is the middle, that's the person in the middle translating between the two. But thinking about it as raising your vibration, even though I think that is what we're doing, uh, I, think, I think when you're raising something or making it higher is inherently more difficult as a paradigm up or higher is harder. So if I had a group of people sitting in the room with me and I asked everyone to move three feet in any direction, their choice, I don't think anyone would choose up uh, because we all just know, right? We know that, that up is more difficult and raising or higher is more difficult. So what I try to think of when I'm sitting with spirit or just sitting to actually do a reading is instead of thinking of it as raising my vibration, I think of it as a different vibration or as, or as um, changing my focus, um, moving my attention, rather than thinking about the, the mechanics of what's happening to my vibration. So the best analogy I can come up with is if you've ever seen in a monitor or a television screen, you can see what's on the screen, but you can also see the reflection of the window that's behind you or a lamp or something like that. And you either have to put your attention on the image of the window and the TV or what's actually being shown on the TV. It's kind of like that, it's switching your attention. Um, and I think thinking of it that way takes out the whole higher up, more difficult thing. Um, I think that attention is extremely, I'm going to hold the video on this someday, that attention I think is extremely powerful in this physical world. And uh, the longer you can hold your attention, the more powerful that is. So um, raising your vibration and holding your attention, I, I think, and sitting in the power and all of that, I, I think... Uh, holding your attention, practicing holding your attention on the connection with spirit is how I try to think about it um, and switching my focus as opposed to raising my vibration. A lot of people talk about blending or blending with spirit and that's when you've connected with somebody and, uh, and you sort of, it kind of feels like you merge with them. 
blending that word phrasing it that way really bothered me it still kind of bothers me because when you blend ingredients you can't unblend them they're all permanently changed so initially i was thinking about um my connection with spirit is linking with them as opposed to like over a computer computer network linking or if you remember the shape changers on star trek ds9 like linking or merging temporarily so that helped me because blending i didn't like calling it blending that connection with a particular person in spirit I also for a while was thinking of myself as a giant, very dry towel and soaking them up because you can always dry out. Um, but those were just sort of mental images to help me get past the wording that was getting in my in my way. Um, I think of people in spirit as people. I get them as people, not as energy, not as spirits, not as like I never say a mother energy. I'll say this woman's a mom or she was a mom while she was here. Um, and so I'm always careful to try to say people in spirit, even spirit person is correct, but that still makes it seem like a different kind of person to me. So I, I think I try to say people in spirit and I actually think of them the same way I think of people in Canada or people in New York, they're people somewhere else. Um, and so going back to that idea that we're all eternal beings having a temporary physical life experience, when you get a client who they want you to connect with is not this eternal being of light or whatever we are. They want to connect with the person that they miss. Um, and so thinking of them as people in spirit as opposed and all, similarly to people in some other country or some other place, I think that helps. Uh, at least it helps me um, to connect with that person that the client knew while they were here. Um, so when I first, uh, so that's kind of the terminology. If you If there's terminology that's bugging you, Try phrasing it a different way and thinking of it in that way. It helped me. Um, and then just a couple of ways of looking at things or even psychological tricks. When the pandemic hit and I suddenly had to do readings over Zoom, that kind of threw me because um, I'd always done them in person up to that point. And I thought, how's that going to work? It turns out it's fine. But when I first was sitting in these groups um, or when I had a client, I would, it sounds ridiculous, but it worked because it was a mental trick. I would grab the internet cord. <laughs> that was going into my computer and I would hold that and look at the image on the screen. And that actually helped me to connect clearly a psychological trick, but it helped. So, um, uh, psyching yourself out works in good ways and in bad. You can get in your own way or you can help yourself just by your attitude toward connecting and your attitude toward any given reading or mediumship in general. Um, and then, uh, the, so the last thing I'll say about that, and I guess it's going to be a fairly short video is, um, Having the mental attitude, this really helped me the most. Uh, it really helped me develop in my mediumship. And that's having the attitude that people in spirit are always there, always constantly, always there, always constantly, always willing and wanting to connect. Um, and once that I really got that into my head, uh, I've never not had a connection. So initially I was just sitting there for a while <laughs> thinking, when is it, when am I going to connect? I know there's got to be someone there. And I just go into it with the attitude that they're always there and always want to connect. And that really made a difference for me. Probably do a whole video on that too. Um, in next week's video, I'm going to talk about something that has come to my attention that really bothers me. Basically, it's about bad mediums, uh, people who are real mediums, uh, who are doing something that I thought only frauds do. <laughs> uh, so kind of uncomfortable. Um, tune in for that. Uh, and as always, leave your questions or comments below, and I will try to do a video about whatever you're asking. See you then.